my name is Sarah Stevens, and I have been growing industrial hemp since 2019. That was the first year that you could grow in Kansas. And I have two Sarah grants that I'm going to talk about that were from 2021 and 2022. But before we dive into the grants, I think it is important to understand that the prohibition of agricultural hemp has created about 80 years of gap in understanding of how to grow, how to process. Um, and then, of course, the any chemicals are um, there's no no chemicals labeled for hemp still today. So there's really a lot of tools that are lacking, including genetic development for agricultural hemp. And I define agricultural hemp as being grown for fiber and grain. I did in 2019 and 2020, the first two years that you could grow, my license was for CBD production. And so that was in a metal building. We had a hydroponic growing system and artificial lights. Um, and I was going to events and there was real farmers is what I call traditional row crop farmers, which I am not. Um, they were there and they were trying to grow CBD outside, CBD varieties outside and talking about walking their fields for pulling out males. And I just, you know, was seeing this was not really the right fit for a guy that normally grows corn or soybeans. And so I started digging into what that, that side of the hemp plant looks like. And that's where the Sarah Grant came in, um, I guess, in addition to the historical prohibition that's listed there, a more recent history, um, the 2014 Farm Bill authorized the research program that eventually rolled out in 2019 in Kansas and most other states. And then the 2018 Farm Bill authorized the commercial production of agriculture, of all, of all hemp. Um, and there's really been a turn, not just in Kansas, but most states where about 80% of growers initially were growing for CBD. And today it's more like 70, 30 of focus on fiber and grain. Um, so in 2019, I'm sorry, 2020, um, we researched, excuse me, 2021, <laughs> we researched five different fields across Kansas. Um, we had six different varieties. We had about a month long planting window when the first farmer planted to the last one. And we studied the different um, you know, weather patterns and pest pressures and wholly we had almost no success in 2021. I had one three acre section that was good. Everything else suffered from uh, probably lack of knowledge <laughs> mostly, but also genetics that weren't a good fit. Um, planting too late in the year, drought, too much rain at one time where it would crust over and we would get poor germination. So in 2022, we took what did work and we grew just two varieties. Um, so the ones that performed at all in 2021, we started growing those exclusively in 2022. We tried to apply the lessons that we learned in the first farmer rancher grant from SARE and narrow in our planting window apply the techniques that we're working through the 21 grant. We wrote a um, planting guide that you can download for free on the Kansas Hemp Consortium website. We also have webinars there that we hosted in conjunction with the SARE grant. Uh, we brought in the Kansas Department of Agriculture, processors, producers. There's a lot of information on those webinars. And those all came as a result of the grant. Um, so 2022, th this is in Manhattan, Kansas, this field here. Um, I think combined, these two sections were close to 50 acres. It was a really beautiful stand. Um, this is New West Genetics, which is a Colorado company and really the only domestically bred fiber grain, grain focused varieties that you can buy today. We've bought seed from um, Ukraine, Canada. There's a lot of Chinese seed in Kansas. That's more on the fiber side. We're grain focused. So we haven't done grown any of the Chinese varieties, but they're also pretty prevalent because China has never stopped growing hemp like the United States. So 22, our five, we had a, one different, but mostly the same group of farmers that we did in 2021. And what we learned um, there, the Western Kansas is very dry and the drought conditions there, just there was no, no good production. Um, Pratt Community College, uh, it was really cool experience. They brought their students out, their ag and the economy class came throughout the season, but at harvest too. Um, they had a pretty decent 10 acres out there. 
that's the Manhattan field that I showed you the aerials from. That was the best performing field both years. And Manhattan um, is in central north, north central Kansas and has pretty good weather, weather compared to Western Kansas, more rain and not nearly as hot. And then Leon, Kansas is close to where I live and work. Our, we have an agricultural hemp processing facility in Augusta, Kansas. And that there was 10 acres there, good stand, got all the way to the harvest and all of the seeds were black and dead inside. And so they had dried up from the best um, conclusion that we had of what happened to them but there was like a 1% germination or viability in the seeds that we collected out of that field. So there's been quite a bit of heartbreak in the, in the hemp world. Uh, there's a lot to learn. And the SARE grants have really, I think, made possible the momentum in Kansas that really wouldn't would not um, otherwise be there. So those were the 21 seasons. And then the 22 seasons were grant-funded research. The 23 last year, uh, we also grew... Uh, probably about half of those same fields are still participating and seeing better and better results. This year, the we got good stands, good fields, and then you get to the point of harvest, and I had two farmers who one tore up their combine and the other just gave up and went to swathing and uh, sickle barring it because it's really a thick ten, uh, tensile strength, high tensile strength fiber, and it is hard on a combine. It wraps. Um, and if you want to get the grain out, you need to combine it and then you need to dry it in a grain bin, which is another piece of equipment that's, uh, pretty sparse on Kansas farms. And so, you know, we've gotten to the successful harvest and now we have new problems to solve with the machinery at, at harvest to make the grain collection viable. Uh, but we're, we're meeting those challenges and, you know, it's good to get to the point of having a good stand that 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 is your challenge instead of just pigweeds took over or drought killed it earlier in the year. Um, these are the Kansas numbers. And I think they pretty, the trend closely mirrors a lot of, of states where we had 200 plus growers in those first two years. Those are almost all, like I said earlier, fiber, excuse me, CBD focused. And then you come down and see the licensed, planted, and harvested acres. So in 2019, Kansas has 5,800 acres licensed. This year, we're down, last year, 2023, down to 900 acres. And we're down to 40 growers. So a lot of that is the shakeout of the CBD growers. Um, but a lot of it is just... Um, frustration. And then our growers fee, our production fee in Kansas is around $1,700. And you still have to get background checks and fingerprints to grow an outdoor row crop. And so we're really working hard on the advocacy to change that. And about eight states have now just there, including Missouri, your hemp program is run through the USDA. So if you want to grow hemp in Missouri, it's a $25 fee. That is for your fingerprints. It goes to the USDA and it's a three-year license from what I understand. So you can see that that would be a more encouraging environment for a producer than what currently exists in Kansas. So we're, as a, a member of the Planted Association in Kansas for Hemp, so I think we're going to begin advocating this year. We've been trying to just lower the fee for several years, but we're not getting uh, the KDA to jump on board with that. So we're just going to start advocating for moving to USDA. And I think a lot of other states are too, where we can hopefully get hemp grains into, into the traditional commodity market and start to see it be treated like corn and soybeans and wheat. Um, I hope that you guys are, I'm not going to spend time talking about the environmental benefits of hemp, but it's very good for the air and for the soil. And if you are interested in supporting it, I would be very happy to talk to you. I have some flyers here that show the products that we make out of hemp. Um, if you're interested in growing hemp, I have some information on that. And if you're just interested in supporting the industry, there's several consumer ready products that are grown in the United States, processed, manufactured in the United States. That includes the hemp wool insulation, the hemp wood flooring. Um, at Midwest Hemp Technology, we make the hemp seed oil and the hemp protein powder. We are doing some experimenting with hemp biochar. The herd is just the woody core of the plant and people use that for animal bedding. It also really recently was approved as a insulation when you mix it with a lime binder for um, residential homes. 
So the future is bright, even though there are still some bur regulatory burdens in the way for agricultural hemp. I do think it's headed in the right direction. And there's always something that everybody can do to help support the industry if you're interested. Uh, those are some of the pictures of the products that are available. And this slide, um, it's really just sort of breaking down uh, the uses. So what people use the fiber for, it has value in the bioplastics, pulping. Um, we at Midwest Hemp are focused on the grain, so we only make short strand fiber, but long strand fiber is what would make textiles and ropes, and that's um, still largely produced in China. The hemp grains, I wanna wrap up talking about that. It's really an exciting area of opportunity. Hemp grains are about 30% protein. Um, out of a field, estimates should be between 1,000 and 1,400 pounds of grain an acre. And um, it is on the verge of being approved as a hemp seed meal, uh, is on the verge of being approved as an ingredient for laying hens. That process has taken about three years and quite a lot of money for the Hemp Feed Coalition to advocate for. So even though I feed my kids hemp protein powder today, you're not supposed to be feeding it to your chickens because it hasn't gone all the way through uh, the process. But that is anticipated for the end of January this year for hemp seed meal to be approved for laying hens. So it's really exciting. And I think once that domino falls, you'll start to see hemp seed meal incorporated in a lot of animal feed. I, um, this is my SARE grant number if you want to look it up or you're welcome to contact me. Uh, again, happy to talk after we wrap up about any of the products that are up here or questions that you might have. I appreciate you all being here today.